there? Oh, there you are. Yeah. How are we doing? Hey. How are you? Okay, so I don't know. We wait a little while. They they just had a big issue going on in uh, and actually maybe Mohammed can talk about it. There's a fire going on right now in McKinney. They sent me a video a little bit ago because they right now a group there was going to try to make it and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. How are you? Good, good. So we're here, uh, Thomas. You want to introduce yourself quickly? Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm Thomas. I'm an MBA student here at St. Bonaventure University, and I also play baseball here. And I was a psychology undergrad, so uh, mental health and well-being really hits close to home for me. Um, and Dr. Mahar and I have decided to kind of put this mental health resiliency training together in an online form to uh, give everyone a platform and give everyone access to these tools to kind of master your mind and take control of your destiny and kind of deal with uh, the things that plague you in your each and every day life. So I'm um, excited to be here and thanks for joining us. Thank you. So why don't you just quickly uh, introduce yourselves? I, I mean, I, I know we have Haiti and Sierra Leone and Florida represented, so that's good. Oh, Herbie's here. Too. Yeah, Julie Fon in here, um, calling in from Florida. This is kind of weird because when I speak, it stops the video or something for safe driving, but I'm not driving. So, um, and and I really wanted to call in because Jim Jim thought that this would bring a lot of benefit to me because I've been having some struggles lately. And, and so it's always good to have different avenues to try and, and, you know, be able to fix whatever is going on in my life. So um, that's really why I'm here, but right. and thank you so much for doing this. Sure. Okay. I think we got talked over. You want to try again, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, we both people talked at once. We couldn't hear it, so perfect now. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. All right. Uh, Mohammed, you want to introduce yourself? All right. I'm Mohammed a student at the University of McKinney, in pursuing a Bachelor's of Science degree in clinical psychology. I need to advocate on mental health advocates living in the northern parts of Sierra Leone. And you, you do uh, mental health training and things there now? Is that what you do? I'm not exactly sure what your role is there. Yes, sir. Excellent. Yes. So I think, um, well, Thomas said, I did introduce myself. I'm Jim. Um, I um, run Bond Responds and help run Positive Ripples and Haiti Scholarships. And uh, I'm on the board of Leogon Techno, which is... Uh, the one I'm most excited about right now. I think there's a lot going on there that is gonna be really good. Um, and I think if there is one problem that we all face, it is mental health stresses. Um, there's not a day, there's not usually an hour when someone doesn't come to me and with some problem of, oh my goodness, I can't because of X, whatever it is. Um, 
so I think it, the um, this grew out of a program we did on campus back in the fall and then again in the spring. Um, and this is just the first run of it. I think that I really am optimistic that we can do this a lot better. So in a way, this is going to be a training of how to do it and how we might be able to get your schools involved, your programs involved, uh, and others. So if at any point you guys have something, let us know, or you can text me afterwards or email me afterwards or whatever. Um, this is this is supposed to be the start of something. This isn't a one-time thing. This is going to be the start of a, a program, hopefully, um, because mental health issues are daily. And I mean, there's a, you know, a, a wide spectrum from I'm, I'm feeling depressed today, or I'm sad, or I'm anxious, to legitimate like mental health issues that need medical attention. We can't do that. We, 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 that's not what we do. Um, we're gonna do what, what I like to call, and the, the person next to me, Thomas, might not agree with me, but uh, a bunch of life hacks, uh, um, hacks that we can do to get through things. And I think in that setting, um, there's not a person on the face of the earth who can't use these things. So that's sort of what I want to get out of this. And uh, so I'm going to ask Thomas to start with the website and just to walk you through and just uh, do whatever. Yeah, your, your, your floor for a bit. So Dr. Mahar has done an unbelievable job at putting together uh, this website. And we've kind of been working on this for some time now. Um, so it's the mental health and resiliency training document. And first off, we're going to start off with a couple um sentences that run true to us, how mental health is important, how we're all in this together, how we're not alone, um, we're better, not perfect. Too often I think we do think we're alone though, right? It's I mean, if something's true. going wrong, oh, I can't talk to anyone about it. I can't like, and I think we have to break that whole whatever. Um, we can, you can always talk to people. And you know, if the first person doesn't wanna talk, find someone else or whatever. I, I think that's super important. There is a stigma around that because it's hard to let people in as well. And mm -hmm. it's hard to ask for help. And what we want to let you guys know and take away from this is that it's okay to not be okay. It really is. And not everyone's going to feel a hundred percent each and every day. You may have 60% one day, next day you may have 70, next day you may have 40% of what you actually truly have. But what are you going to do with that 40% or that 60% or that 70% that you truly have? How are you going to maximize that and not try to strive to have that 40% or 30% that you truly don't have access to that day? Because some days just aren't your day. It'll be like that. But how do you deal with that? And um, we're trying to be better, not perfect. And I would say, just add to that, it, is, it doesn't need to be the whole day. Like, don't just because you have a bad morning right off the whole day. Uh, I can tell you my Monday was miserable. My Monday morning was absolutely miserable. But by noon, I got a run in, I was feeling better. And by, you know, three o'clock, I was from three till, I don't know, 10, it was a great day. And then I went to the store and forget about it. Never mind. I'm joking. <laughs> That's so true. How do you, uh, how do you get out of that? You have 86,400 seconds in a day. So what are you doing to not let that 10 second bout or that hour long bout ruin the rest of your day? I think that's really important. Um, so here are just a couple other things that we're talking about. Um, things are really not and never as bad as they actually seem. Um, our mind likes to conjure up things uh, to seem a certain way um, and may also dramatize them and make them seem a lot worse than they actually are. And our, our minds are kind of a dark, deep, scary place. Um, we think about things, we overthink things, we psych ourselves out. Um, but we all got to know that we're not our minds. We're, uh, we're individuals separate from that. Um, and things are never almost as bad as they actually seem. Uh, secondly, we are enough. You are always more than enough. You don't need to be the richest. You don't need to be the most successful. You don't need to have the most beautiful partner, um, largest home. Don't judge yourself of that. Don't compare yourself to others. It's a matter of you are you. You are good. You are enough. You can make an impact in this world. And what are you doing to make that impact? How are you bettering yourself? How are you bettering others? Lastly, mental health is important. And no, you went to the top again. You scrolled back to the top. Again. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Mental health is important. Things are never bad as they seem. Um, and then there we are. Cool picture. Cool picture. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who took that. He took it. I took it. There's a little place here in uh, New York. So uh, that's another thing that I think has really helped me personally is just being immersed in nature. Um, when I feel bad, I want to get outside. Don't want to stay inside. The sun 
does wonders to our body. Uh, moving does wonders to your body too. I know Dr. Mahar will speak about that in her, his life hacks here uh, at the bottom. It's one of the resources we have. And moving your body does wonders to the different processes and mechanisms through your composition and the chemical makeup of your body. And the same is said for attaining sunlight in your body and going outside and being immersed in nature and um, having that explorative uh, facet of your life there. So. All good. All good. So I guess one question, what, what stresses, I mean, <clears throat> we all have stresses a hundred percent. Um, clearly Haiti right now is going through a lot of things with, with gangs and with poverty on top of poverty, on top of poverty. Um, Sierra Leone, uh, I mean, from really from the civil war on, I mean, it was a poor country and then the civil war and then, uh, you know, just daily, it almost seems like there's some incident ac or accident or fire or something going on. Um, I I'm guessing you guys are all under stress and you want to just, if you want to feel free to talk about that and we'll go on or we can just go on and start talking about how we think about stress. Oh, okay, this is uh, Valeria. Um, this one, this one, stress for me is uh, people misunderstand. Like I'm, I'll give you guys a good example. Every day I'm trying to get out of my parking, my car, Somebody will park the motorcycle right in front of my garage. Somebody will park the car in front of my garage. <laughs> this morning, I was coming here to join Jonas for the meeting. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely hear you. Little things, even though it's not a little thing, little things really add up. Uh, I was having that conversation last night with someone here. Well, why? Why did they do this? No, no parking sign. <laughs> Tow the truck. How do you get out of there? How do you how do you maneuver around them? Well, I there. So I usually end up spending like 15 minutes just trying to find out owner so you can move the car or motorcycle or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. That is crazy. And think of how much time that could take out of your day. And then think of the stress it can cause you of having to deal with it every day, making you late, making you nervous, anxious, like all those things. Yeah, and that's tough because that's an external factor, right? That's something outside of your control. So you you don't even have any control over that. That's just placed there. Yeah, exactly. So that's tough. How do you deal with external factors, <laughs> Dr. Mahar? Um, I usually go running. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, no, but I mean, there, I'll give you an example from this week. I, I, like I said, Monday was a really rough day, and it was, my external factor ha was actually going on in Sierra Leone that day. Um, I woke up to a bunch of messages um, that there were four um, students who were bit by dogs who probably had rabies, and we had to raise money almost immediately. And all that stuff was not like I had my day mentally planned out. And all of a sudden that day just totally changed. Mm -hmm. And I think that added the stress of that morning. Like I said, I was miserable because I knew what I was supposed to be doing. And then all of a sudden this thing just came in and interrupted me. And I, I actually literally went into my office for a while, turned on the sound of beach music or, you know, waves hitting the, the thing and just sat there and like, okay, five minutes, I got to calm down mm -hmm. because I was just upset. So I think, you know, go for it. Find a little peace, I guess. You need that release of some sort to yeah. get you back to that state yeah. of just homeostasis. Yeah. Sort of. So yeah. but Julie, did you do you experience any stress with your parking or anything like that? <laughs> at, at, at any point you don't need to do this too. Not at all. I, I don't yeah. I mean if, if you we're not putting you on the spot at all. So if, if you'd prefer not to talk, that's great too.
I'm not, I'm not sure if you're preferring not to talk or just we can't hear you. <laughs> Looks like you're moving your lips, so. <laughs> Well, Mohammed, why don't we why don't we come back to Julie? Oh, wait, there maybe Julie, maybe. No. All right, nope, we'll go to Mohammed. Nope. All right, well, we we'll, let's let's talk about where this training came from. So, um the trainings we did on campus um, were built, built on resiliency. And I think, why don't we talk a little about resiliency? And I will let Thomas, since this is his baby, uh, what do we mean by resilience? resiliency? So let me start off with where this training did come from. Um, this training actually came out of a uh, training that we did on campus here with Gerald Daly. Um, he was a resident coordinator with the United Nations for over 32 years serving in seven different places, I believe, most recently being Bhutan. And he created this uh, resiliency training uh, for United Nations workers that were in conflict zones. And they're in war zones. It happened after he was uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, he found that these workers for the United Nations didn't have anything to deal with the stresses that they had daily um, from their experiences working with the United Nations in these conflict zones. Um, so he decided to create this and um, this training has really inspired us to make this into something that's um, more accessible to um, the community and kind of giving people these tools in a virtual platform tool um, means so we can do this. Um, but resiliency is basically the ability to spring back. It's the ability to get back up no matter what, um, whether you're knocked down, you have to crawl, you have to walk, you have to run, whatever way possible, you move forward. Um, it, 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 rather than jumping straight into the meaning, um, we can look at the mental and resilience. Mental is a word relating to the mind, um, whereas resilience is that ability to bounce back, spring back, um, and then combining them, it's the ability of your mind to recover after different challenges that are thrown your way. Um, and this is why it's so imperative because our daily stressors in our lives um, plague us each and every day. So whether it's from getting out of your driveway, whether that's from dealing with the stressors of people getting bitten by dogs, it, what, how do you spring back? How do you jump back forward? How do you get the most out of your day and not letting those dictate the rest of your day? Well done. Well done. So what we want to do is we're going to set up the stage and talking about the need for this. Um, if we look at there are all types of stats that people are interested from, from Haiti, from Sierra Leone, from Ukraine, we're also going to be working there. Um, I really am impressed with what the World Health Organization has. They have a list of resources uh, that we have linked on our page that are all, they're global in nature but they're also uh, by country. So you can sort on if you want to see what is available in Haiti or what is available in Sierra Leone, or I don't think we have anyone from Liberia right now, but there was supposed to be someone here um, that you can see what is going on and how, you know, how all of this, what, what things are available. Um, and unfortunately, and globally, the answer is oftentimes not enough. Um, even in the United States, but everywhere, and I'm, I'm sure you guys can speak to it much better, but you know, you have one psychologist for a, a city of 60,000 or 70,000, it's just not enough. Um, so what we want to do is to find a way that, you know, to prevent you from needing that in, in many cases, not all cases, some cases, you know, you have, you have something serious, you have to go um, on that. So, um, and when this is just some stats, um, and I'll, I'll give you these from the United States, after COVID, uh, so general rule of thumb, you have around 20-ish percent, a little more or less, in any given year who have a episode of depression. So it, it may be a day, it may be a couple days, it can be caused from a breakup, it can be caused from a loss, um, worried about money, whatever. Um, Post-pandemic, the numbers were around 40%. So it more than doubled the number of people who were going through things. Um, and I can speak for my class. I, I can easily say 
that last year um, I took more people over to the counseling center on campus than probably cumulatively in my whole career. Um, and even this year, um, recently we had someone on campus commit suicide. Um, just off campus, but a student committed suicide a few, two weeks ago, I guess it was. Two weeks ago. And um, I, I opened my class that day with, if anyone needs to talk about anything, you know, my my door is open. I will close it once you're here. I'm not going to let people know about it. But I had, I had someone take me up on it. And he was going through some things and he just wanted to talk. And he came in and, I mean, you know, after some tears and all of that, he I think is better. Um, I don't know. I mean, clearly I check in on him now and then, but I think this is a, this is an incredible need. Um, just an incredible need globally. And I, 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 you know, stress comes from lots of things and there's, you know, from the news every day, from hearing over and over again that, you know, whether it's global warming or wars or lack of money or any of this stuff. Um, but also you guys are living through it. I, I, I think that's the thing. I mean, whether it's, you know, loss of a family member or whether it's, I, I mean, Jonas, every, you know, regularly, how are you going to feed all those, the people you have at your, all the children, or, you know, how are we going to start this school going or any, it, it, it does wear on all of us. And I think what we have to do is to find ways um, to prevent it. And what happened, and not prevent it, to deal with it. We can't prevent stress. Like that, that is just not even a possibility, but we need to deal with it. And on the website, and I actually do this in class, how stress affects us even before you're born. If your mom is stressed, if your family is stressed, and then it gets passed on generation to generation. Um, maybe a little, I, I don't know if we need to go into all of that today. I don't think we have time, but it is there and at all levels, early childhood. The incredible, if you look at the stresses that are the, the developing brain, so the brain goes through incredible development. And when, if they are stressed during that development, um, it often stunts that development. And sometimes it, it, it's really, really, really tough to recover from that. So, and, and I'm just gonna go to Sierra Leone for a second because I have a friend there who was held hostage for, I think six years as a uh, during the Civil War, he he um, the, the, the rebels overran his village. Um, they he thought for most of the, about ten years he thought his entire family had been killed. They weren't, but he had been held hostage. They were training him to be a a child soldier, and think of all of the things that that caused, like. To this day, I mean, he's and he's very well. I mean, he's incredible now. Like he's he's mind-blowingly good. Um, but let's be honest. Occasionally, he's a little needy. He 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 contacts me twenty-five times a day. Like, but who wouldn't be? Like, like I, I think I would do the same thing. So um, so yeah. So that's some of the stuff. And you know, through the teenage years, I mean, I I, I don't want to turn this into a class on it, but there's a lot. Trauma, air pollution, I mean, noise pollution. Um, I wish I had brought with me. I just, I, I have a pair of headphones that I wear in my office all the time. Um, and there is nowhere that I know that is louder than Leogan. Every second, people are beeping horns and they're, you know, motos and just, it's really, really loud there and, and stressful all the time. Um, and I think that all of you, and especially when we're working at the school there, we have to realize that that, that, takes, a, that takes a toll on us. Um, there, there is a famous study um, that looks at a school in New Haven, Connecticut. And the school had, it, it was an elementary school. The third grade class, up to third grade, the students did spectacularly well. They were really, really good. They, were, they tested a, almost a year above average for the state. They were doing really, really well. They go to the fourth grade and their grades drop, their performance drops. And now imagine for a second, you're that teacher, you're that fourth grade teacher, you're thinking it's my fault, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Well, what they did was they investigated, they, they, some people came up and they examined it. And what they found was that there was a train that went by the side of the building that was the fourth grade class. It didn't go by the third grade class. 
So it, it was sheltered. The third grade class was on the other side of the building. Just that noise was causing them to drop almost a full year in their testing. So that's, that's like one part of the day for the people at that school. Think of it now, you're in a city, you're in, you know, on the street where people are beeping the horns 20 hours a day, uh, and maybe 24 in some cases. Um, all of that stress gets to us. And I think if there is one thing, I mean, scarcity in mental capacity, and we're all, I mean, everyone's brain's about the same. Like that's, it, it's not like, oh, wow, that person's so much smarter. What, what many people do is can use their brain in a better way. And I think that's what we have to do is find ways to relax, just to get at it and to, to do more. So your turn. I'm off my soapbox. I, that's I, my big one. I think it's really interesting too. And kind of building off of that is all these external factors that have an impact on us as human beings throughout our development. And um, it's interesting to say that. So speaking to another study, uh, there was a study on baby chicks and they had these baby chicks in a psychology lab in which they put eye patches over their right eye um, when they were just born. And from there, they didn't attain these critical thresholds to have vision acuity, which means that they didn't actually have the correct vision development and stimulation from the environment outside to allow for them to develop, to grow. And through that, in later in life, they had cataracts, they had developments of these malignancies within their eyes, um, and they didn't have normal vision acuity. So similar in life, there's going to be times where people they maybe don't have true access to um, other things that others with perceived normal development may have, and that may affect them later in life. And then the question remains is, how, how do we deal with that? How do we not let that define us? How do we overcome that and become a better individual? Because um, this one thing may have stunted our growth per se in a certain aspect of it, but that doesn't define us in any which way whatsoever. So I thought that was relevant as well. Completely, completely. And so what we want to do, and I don't know if we want to take time, do you want to show a quick video or do we just want to yeah, keep talking? We can definitely um, show one. Let's look at how chronic, of, uh, sorry, chronic stress affects the brain. And I don't know if you guys can all see this. Can you see it? Can you see it? Are you sleeping restlessly, feeling irritable or moody, forgetting little things and feeling overwhelmed and isolated? Don't worry, we've all been there. You're probably just stressed out. Stress isn't always a bad thing. It can be handy for a burst of extra energy and focus, like when you're playing a competitive sport or have to speak in public. But when it's continuous, the kind most of us face day in and day out, it actually begins to change your brain. Chronic stress, like being overworked or having arguments at home, can affect brain size, its structure, and how it functions, right down to the level of your genes. Stress begins with something called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, a series of interactions between endocrine glands in the brain and on the kidney, which controls your body's reaction to stress. When your brain detects a stressful situation, your HPA axis is instantly activated and releases a hormone called cortisol which primes your body for instant action. But high levels of cortisol over long periods of time wreak havoc on your brain. For example, chronic stress increases the activity level and number of neural connections in the amygdala, your brain's fear center. And as levels of cortisol rise, electric signals in your hippocampus, the part of the brain associated with learning, memories, and stress control, deteriorate. The hippocampus also inhibits the activity of the HPA axis, so when it weakens, so does your ability to control your stress. That's not all, though. Cortisol can literally cause your brain to shrink in size. Too much of it results in the loss of synaptic connections between neurons and the shrinking of your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that regulates behaviors like concentration, decision-making, judgment, and social interaction. It also leads to fewer new brain cells being made in the hippocampus. This means chronic stress might make it hard for you to learn and remember things, and also set the stage for more serious mental problems like depression and eventually Alzheimer's disease. The effects of stress may filter right down to your brain's DNA, 
An experiment showed that the amount of nurturing a mother rat provides its newborn baby plays a part in determining how that baby responds to stress later in life. The pups of nurturing moms turned out less sensitive to stress because their brains developed more cortisol receptors, which stick to cortisol and dampen the stress response. The pups of negligent moms had the opposite outcome, and so became more sensitive to stress throughout life. These are considered epigenetic changes, meaning that they affect which genes are expressed without directly changing the genetic code. And these changes can be reversed if the moms are smart. But there's a surprising result. The epigenetic changes caused by one single mother rat were passed down to many generations of rats after her. In other words, the results of these actions were inherited. It's not all bad news, though. There are many ways to reverse what cortisol does to your stressed brain. The most powerful weapons are exercise and meditation, which involves breathing deeply and being aware and focused on your surroundings. Both of these activities decrease your stress and increase the size of the hippocampus, thereby improving your memory. So don't feel defeated by the pressures of daily life. Get in control of your stress before it takes control of you. So I think that was really, really well done. And now I want you um, to think about it for a second. How many people in Haiti, Sierra Leone, even you know, in the United States that go through absolutely horrible upbringings um, and th th they were brought up poorly, their family, and maybe you know, w poverty, maybe they are somewhat abandoned. Um, I mean, orphanages, et cetera, where they're not getting all the love and care treatment they should be getting. And then see how that affects them later on. Um, it really is a tough situation. And I mean, what we want to do, and I, I, I talk to people here about this as well, not just there, that this group, whoever this is right now, we have to be the generation that stops that. So we, what I would love to see this grow into is a parenting class. We could have groups that are working on teaching how to help raise kids. We should have groups that are working in schools, how to deal with people who have very stressful times and how to handle that. And teachers, so let's, let's go down. I mean, I, I, nothing again, I'm sure there are many, many very good teachers, but I have had some horrible experiences with teachers in Laogan that they don't have this training and when the student acts up, they yell, they make it worse. And I think what we want to do longer term, not today, but longer term is to work with those groups as well. So I would like, I would offer right now when Leogon Techno gets ready, like we have a training with the teachers that we go through and say, this is how we should deal with stressful situations in the classroom. And I think without stepping on anyone's toes, I mean, there are some teachers that are wonderful, but I think we need to raise that bar for what it makes, what it takes to be a teacher in many of these, I will say poor areas. And, and it's not just there. I mean, the United States has the same exact issue, a hundred percent. So I'll shut up. <laughs> I, think, I think that's very, very relevant is that uh, speaking to epigenetic changes and how they're passed down, each individual is a product of the systems in place within their own bodies. Um, and then we default in then speaking to stress and our ability to bounce back to those systems that we know. If we are raised in an environment where we have maladaptive coping mechanisms, where we're going to be yelling at people, where we're not going to be processing things uh, in a correct manner or properly or healthy um, that means that's going to be passed down to our children. Our children are a product of the environment they're raised in. Um, and the people that we are around are also through that group thing kind of deal. Um, they're also going to be susceptible to being impacted by the way that we interact with others and how we deal with stress and how we cope with these things. Um, so if we're not able to hold ourselves accountable, if we're not able to deal with uh, stressors in a positive manner, these individuals are not going to be as well. Um, and I think that's very important that we need to be well-trained um, to actually deal with these stresses, not only for ourselves, but for the people that we're gonna be around and especially for children to come to prepare them for life um, when they get to that point as well. Com so. Completely 100%.
So a, a one example of that, and I'm going to go to, I think it's your favorite book. I know it was your favorite book. So let's talk a little about trauma and the idea of the body keeping score. You suggested that there might be long-term consequences of this. And I think we see that. Um, I mean, the, the life expectancy in many, you know, poverty is one, one proxy, not the only proxy, but one proxy for stress. You see incredible relationships between life expectancy and poverty. And the, the I think in large part caused by stress. So body keep score. Tell me a little about that one. Absolutely. So the body keep score is in fact, one of my favorite books. Uh, I love to read. And I think that's one of the ways to uh, keep my mind sharp and to get more experience um, in a way that maybe life experience doesn't uh, actually directly have, but reading a book and reading what works for others or things that they have to say to you. I think that's uh, very helpful. Uh, the Body Keeps a Score uh, is an awesome book. It speaks to what the name suggests, that your body is always going to be susceptible and aware of what your mind is thinking. So if you're stressed out consistently, if you're HPA... There's been a big shift uh, in what? recent years oh, in our understanding. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't even do that. If, if, if your HPA is releasing cortisol continually, as we saw in the last video, you're going to be more, more prone to success uh, to stress and you're going to be under those copious amounts of stress that are going to impact you. The way that I liken that is to your muscle. Say you're bending your bicep like this and you're flexing your muscle and that's um, show off. It, show off. That's Did basically you see that? that's Did basically you see that? Did everyone just I want to interrupt for a second. Did you see that? <laughs> that's basically <laughs> Look at these guns. That's what he was saying. Come on. That's basically your brain. If you're under constant tension, if you're under constant stress and you're not released from that, you're going to be not able to cope with these um, nuances of your day. You're going to implode. Your muscle is going to release, and that's going to be a deep, dark, dangerous place that you're going to be a part of. And this video, I think, speaks yeah, to that. This, this does. Better. This is sort of an introduction to it. Of how trauma stays with the person over time. We used to think that trauma was held in the brain as a bad memory. We've had the assumption that if we can talk about it or forget about it, we can move on with our lives. Now we understand that trauma is actually a body memory. It gets stored on the central nervous system and stuck in the here and now part of our brain. Any sensations like sight, smell, or sound can bring back memories from a previous event. Often called triggers. That means trauma is always running in the background. Here's an example. Beth attends a training session on trauma for work and hears stories and examples of childhood trauma. The next day, Beth breaks out into hives. For the next few days, she's agitated and can't focus. Beth's trauma happened when she was very young and she has no conscious memory of it, but her body kept the score. To figure out what's going on, Beth reaches out to her therapist and friends. With their support, she turns to her adoptive mother for answers and learns she was abandoned by her birth mother as an infant. There are ways to help Beth heal her body that has long had to keep the score. She can do things to tune into her body, like meditation, guided breath, dance, prayer, yoga, or singing. And she can notice what her body feels when she is doing these calming activities. This way, she can understand how she might obtain felt safety when she needs it and return to those activities to feel safe over and over again. There is a way to heal from trauma. When we can name our sensations instead of being driven by them, we orient to the here and now, feel the safety in the present moment, and give our body a new score to keep. So that, that gets to that idea. Um, and I think we all like all have had stress um, in lots of ways. So I don't know, we still have time. Let's, let's do one more. So scroll down a little further if you would. And let's talk about natural disasters because Haiti has had their share in Sierra Leone as well. So after natural disasters and Florida as well and Florida as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they're oftentimes right after the disaster, you're too busy to be really panicky, right? You go through it. You're, you're worried about, you know, getting your house back. You're worried about that. And then later on, it starts to hit you like what you've lost, how big a problem it is. And I think that's, that's where oftentimes the problems arise. I'll give you an easy example. Um, it, from Florida this past trip. We were down there. Um, so Hurricane Ian hit uh, back in what, late September, I guess it was. Um, I think it was late September. And we were there um, in late February, early March. 
And I was talking to a couple of the, the volunteer leaders down there and they were saying lots of people are having stress now that we're okay, or, or having problems, mental health problems now that were okay three or four months ago. Um, and I think, I mean, even one is silly example. We worked on a house for hours and hours and hours. We had a big group there and we were driving back and she called that was pretty upset that we had accidentally taken a broom and clearly she didn't really care about the broom. It was just that, that stress that was built up and it was the only thing that she could address. Um, and I think that's something that, we, you know, we have these triggers that we often don't know about. We don't even see. Um, I'll give you another example from my, from the store that I run. Um, two weeks ago, I had a deli employee, a, a, a customer complained about a deli employee and the deli employee was a really good worker. He, he was, he was a, one of my better people. And, um, he, he, he lost it. He just completely lost it. Started screaming at the deli manager, screaming at the manager of the store. Uh, we had to let him go. And I went and talked to him um, afterwards. And what he was saying was that he didn't know what happened, but what so, be, years before he had this very traumatic experience when someone accused him of something that he did not do. And I mean, it was something really bad. It was like, go to jail bad thing. And he did not do it. And he was found innocent. It was fine. But this, the way that the customer had complained brought back that memory and it, it triggered this long skew, spew of like noise, basically. He was just screaming at everyone. And I think we all have stress and in, in many cases in Haiti or wherever where, let's be honest, people aren't always honest, right? I mean, you've been ripped off, you, people promise you something and it doesn't happen and pretty quickly, you learn or you, you've been taught that people aren't to be trusted. And then that becomes a stressor too, because every time someone says something, you think, well, they're not really gonna do it. Um, I, it, literally totally unrelated to this talk, just that Thomas and I were here before we, we went live, we were talking and I, I literally said that, you know, they've never met a bad person. Like people are good. There's all, there's good in everyone. Yeah. And I think what, when you see that, when you look for that, it helps. So why don't we scroll down to see how we deal with stress? I think that would be a good, uh, I don't want to not get through that. Um, scarcity is my favorite scarcity. topic. We're going to, we, we sort of talked about it already. A lot um, of good resources on it too. Yeah. I, I teach a, a two weeks topic on this just for class. And it, it's, it's a lot. We could, we could go on there for hours. Let's do that. Let's do that for a second. That's that picture. So I think this is important if you can see it. Um, I'm not saying have no stress because even no stress, you don't get anything done. So I want you to start this school. That's some stress, right? We need to deal with that. I want you to whatever, um, start a program of gardens or whatever. That's some stress. But at some point, the stress gets so much that your performance actually drops and it goes down that other tail. It, it gets worse and worse and worse. What we want to do is stop it before it gets there. We don't, we don't want there to be this, you know, negative performances as things happen, because then, I mean, we, we, we all know positive ripples, the idea that one good thing leads to another good thing. We also have negative spirals where one bad thing leads to another bad thing, leads to another bad thing. And we've all been there a hundred percent. I think nonstop. Misfortune begets misfortune. And you can see that, especially in baseball as well. Um, if you make one error and you're thinking about that last error, your mind's not in the right place. And that next play that's hit to you, the next ball that's hit to you, maybe you make another error. Maybe you go up to the plate and you swing through a fastball. You're thinking about that play before. And then you swing through another fastball. You start striking out. And now it's a negative spiral. And you're going down this deep, dark path. How do you get into the right state mentally to actually go and forget what happened? Not just forget, but like put yourself in the right space where you can attack that next opportunity head on. It's, you need a reset. Like I, I, in my language, you need a reset. You need to say, okay, you know, a short memory, however you want to think about it. And you have, you know, it's a new pitch. It's, you know, if you're a football player, you know, it's a new play, whatever. You just can't dwell on what's just happened. Absolutely. So, so both Thomas and I did this independently. We came up with a list of ways that we deal with stress. Um, I think it's pretty interesting if you keep going down. Here we go. Um, so generically, people deal with stress, you know, there's good ways and bad ways. I'm going to do the bad ways first. Um, drugs and alcohol. People try to avoid the problems by drinking it away uh, or by taking drugs and forgetting about it. 
they withdraw. They don't, they don't want to deal with people. They just, you know, they go back into their house, their room, their whatever, and don't go out. They isolate themselves. Some people overeat. Um, you know, it, 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 it's comfort foods. They're named for a reason, right? They do add comfort. When, you, when you're eating, you're not thinking about whatever the problem is. Um, some people can't sleep at all. Other people don't want to get out of bed. They stay in bed for hours and hours and hours. Violence, um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm a, a big person if I can take it out on someone smaller than me. Um, that's why in many cases, and we have problems with, you know, domestic violence where the typically male um, takes it out on the typically female because they can, and that, that gives them a feeling of power. And, and, and it's silly. It's, it's the exact opposite of power, but exactly. in their, it's power. Tribalism. I mean, we see that in the United States right now, right? I mean, the United States has, has become red state, blue state, or Democrat, Republican. However, um, I absolutely love the 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 Leo got sorry not Leo got the Sierra Leone paper because on the front page of the news every single day they have a thing: stop tribalism. So, I mean, when you are stressed, it is super easy to have an us them world. There is no us and them. It's just us. Like we are all the same. If beside underneath our colors, underneath where our locations are, I mean, I, I regularly tell myself, like if I lived in Sierra Leone, would I bug me every day asking for stuff? I probably would. If I lived in Haiti, would I worry about things and bug me every day? I probably would. Um, so there's no us and them. Period. So I'm giving Thomas some good ways to deal with it. Good ways. We spoke about a couple before, um, being in nature, getting it out into the sun, um, exercising. A lot of people work out, get their blood flowing and uh, put themselves in a good state. Um, listening to music, being with community, whether that's family, friends, um, people that you can challenge and people that can challenge you. That's always really good to have. Um, then also being out in music, listening to nature. Um, Art therapy. Art therapy, Color. yoga, journaling. Yeah, do any of that. Learning a new skill, doing something different. Um, it, there's so many different ways. So what we did, and I think it's right here. It might be down below for this. Um, both Thomas and I have a list of ways that we deal with stress. Here we go. Um, my list, Take make sure you get sleep. You know, life looks a lot more stressful when you don't get sleep. Exercise. And don't, don't put pressure on yourself. You don't need to race every day. You don't need to set a, you know, I bench the most I've ever done. Just, just go do it. Just have fun. Get up, show up, um, drink more, get, and get in the water. Like to me, and this varies by everyone. Get a water bottle. <laughs> to me, yeah. To me, getting in the water matters a lot too. I love, like, I can be super stressed out. I go to a pool. I go to the, uh, I get in the water. I swim a little bit. And it's like, why? What, why was I worried anyways? What, what was I worried about? Um, get outside, volunteer. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I wouldn't be me if I didn't say that one, right? But, you know, you gain perspective. Um, you know, you don't have it as bad. I, I, I joke that, you know, you no longer complain about warm milk, even almond milk. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, make a difference in the world. Gain community. I mean, the community that I've gained through Bond Response is nothing short of staggering. But my, I bet you... 80% of my friends come somehow through bond response. Um, find quiet. Like I really think there are times of each day you need to set, whether you want to call it meditation, whether you want to call it like sitting in a dark room, I don't care. But five, 10 minutes, no, it doesn't take forever. Community, real food, don't, don't eat junk. Like I, I really think, and cooking, like cooking helps soothe you as well. Yoga, I love yoga. Reading, Thomas already mentioned that one. Focus on the present. Um, very, very often we think whatever's happening right now is going to continue to get worse. Um, probably not. Mental vacations. I love mental vacations. I, I, I challenge you all to do one a day. Take 30, 40 seconds. Pick somewhere. Doesn't matter. It can be out in, you know, it can be, I don't know, <laughs> go to, go to Lakai if you want to go to wherever and just imagine it, like literally focus on everything. Like, if I do it, I sometimes even imagine getting on the plane, getting there, what's it going to be like, going hiking, whatever, in my mind. It's not as good, but it's a lot better. It takes 30 seconds and it's free. So uh, highly recommend it. Have fun. Just play. Like, literally play. It doesn't, you, you can be silly. It's all right. You don't need to be this serious person every waking moment. Get out in nature, we always said. Cook. Have a garden. Even look at a flower. Just like, 
literally, I take pictures almost every day of flowers. I, in fact, I sent one to a friend yesterday and she said, it was a dandelion. And she said, <laughs> me a picture of a week. Like, well, it's not to me, it's a flower. Like, and I think that those are some of my ways. Thomas, you're next, you're right below me. Um, I, I love visualizing. And I think that ties to mental vacations. They're a great way to relieve stress. Uh, and also similar to what I said about books is that you're basically getting experience before you actually do something. And the same thing with visualization, whether you're going into a big meeting, whether you're preparing to um, talk to someone, um, you're playing that moment out before it actually happens. And I think that's really awesome as well. Can I, can I just call time out for yeah. just half a second? I absolutely, totally, 100% was imagining what this meeting was going to be like as driving to this meeting. Absolutely. Completely was. And look at that. It probably prepared yeah. you yeah. and put Completely you in the right headspace. You may have been nervous, not knowing how we set it up or what yeah. we're doing, but yeah. hey, look where I, we are. I, I, driving down Constitution Avenue, that's what I was doing. <laughs> um, on my list, setting goals. I think goals are really, really beneficial um, to relieving stress. Um, goals that are attainable, goals that are um, nearsighted, and then also farsighted. You're going to be setting those cookie crumbs that are going to get you to that end goal. And you're setting those little goals up to get you there uh, to that end goal. So if you want to make however much money, what are you going to do to get to that? What are you going to put yourself in um, and where are you going to do this? And how are you going to get yourself to that point of making X amount of dollars? And your mileage may vary on that one, because to me, and this is, this is a perfect example to me, goals are stressful. Like I don't like setting goals for that reason. So it, it varies to each of it. You have to find what works for you. What works for you. Absolutely. Um, think about what's going on in your life. Be mindful, eat healthy food, similar to cooking. I love cooking. Um, do something nice for someone. I think that's huge. Um, it's this idea of kinship and this is, uh, the idea of, uh, being a servant leader and having an attitude of gratitude. Um, a lot of the joys in my life and the greatest joys come from helping others. And whether I'm battling something myself, that brings me great joy. And that may put me and be that reset to put me in the right headspace. Um, smile more. This is an interesting stat here. The average baby smiles 400 times a day. The average adult smiles only 20 times a day. You might as well smile while you have teeth. It also does uh, great things. To, and if you don't have teeth, and if you still smile. And if you don't have teeth, you, you might as well still smile as well. Um, it does great things. For your, area medical will it, help. Uh, OMG. Yeah, they will. Um, it does great things for your body and uh, releases a lot of hormones to actually promote uh, healthy habits and uh, relieve stress. Um, reach out to friends or family, have real conversations, think about how far you've come. Um, again, um, having an attitude of gratitude and then just breathing, uh, living in the present moment. Um, then a couple others right here, hike, get lost, be present, strip away yourself from technology, technology journal. You, you mentioned that I journaling think that's a is amazing. Get yourself one of these journal right here. Um, it really puts you in the present moment to think about and be intentional with your thoughts and not just having this hustle and bustle of your day and living day in and day out and not actually truly thinking about the things that go on your day and they get may get lost in the weeds. Um, motion creates emotion. I think one of the, this is one of the greatest ones. Um, same with working out is that you're going to be eliciting emotions from the way that you move. If you're going to lock yourself in your room and just watch Netflix or just veg out, um, that's really going to not be beneficial per se, um, to eliciting these positive emotions, uh, get outside, get in the sun, try something new, seek discomfort. Don't just do things that are uh, comfortable. And I think another interesting thing that I think, um, is that resiliency gives you, you the opportunity to get more out of life. If you have that ability to bounce back, to spring forward, you're able to take more risks. These are calculated risks per se. Um, but if you take as many risks as your courage allows, you're able to experiencing more things, do new things, and not just be in your domain of just being comfortable. Don't be afraid to fail. Like, I, I, that's how I would word that one. Don't be afraid to fail. I fail every day, nonstop. Very true. Um, and then just a bunch of others down here. So take pictures. I like that one. Look at pictures. That's a good one. Pray, go to church. Um, if you're religious, that could be very, very um, important you to you. Community as well. Community yeah. as well. So. Yeah. And I want to end today. And I think it was community was the perfect one. Um, there's a study from Harvard. It's over 85 years long. And what they have concluded is that the number one secret to a happier life is community and your friends. And don't be afraid. I will next week, uh, next Wednesday. In fact, if you're not doing anything Wednesday, four o'clock, oh, 2.30 next okay. Wednesday, come to my class. What I do is I give the first graduation address last class talk. I do it every single year. And it is a 
what we've learned at college it's talk. And in it, I always say something to the effect of, I teach finance, you have to learn to invest. And what are you going to invest in? And you're going to invest in, and they all think stocks and all that. No, you're going to invest in your health, mental health and physical health. You're going to invest in your relationships. There is no asset that you have at all. And I will say this over and over again, the most valuable assets you have are your health and your relationships. Other than that, I mean, money comes and goes, all of that stuff. But if, and I don't know, it means different things to different people, but I will tell you, it means that when your friend is in trouble, you reach out to that friend, you call them, you, like, you may drive to them. I, I will tell the class next week that it means look around and your family, the, all these people in this classroom, many of them have parents that are gonna be dying in the next however many years. When they have a funeral, go. It, don't ask, don't call, say, what can I do? Go. I still remember completely all the people that came when my mom died, every single one. And I mean, it, it meant a lot. And you don't think it's going to, but it does. Be there for the other person. I know Julie has worked with us in Bond Response. I am convinced that what we do more than building ramps, more than gutting houses, is we bring hope. And when people lose hope, it all falls apart. So be that hope, be that, be that breath of hope that the world needs so much. And I don't want to turn to Francis because I'm, I'm really not a religious person, but I think he nailed it when he said it is giving when we receive. And when you build that community, that community it brings you in and it really helps you as well as them. Absolutely. Well said. So, so we're out of our, we're running up. We, in fact, we bumped up against our hour already and we promised an hour, but I think there's a lot. I hope we keep doing these. I think that I, I hope you guys get something out of it. We will be sharing this. Um, and if, yeah, show, show the, there's a little PowerPoint here um, that has a lot of great resources from Gerald Daly. This is basically based off of his presentation that he gave us in his seminars, and it speaks to a lot of different things and that we felt were relevant here. Um, so that's there as well. And then also we have a little doc down here, which is kind of like a training document with a lot of other resources as well. And then also on the website, the thought is to have it uh, translated into Russian, Haitian and Creole, uh, Ukrainian, and then Spanish, just so accessibility is there. And then um, this tool is for yours to use and use it as you may. So what, why don't we, well, we'll put the link on the WhatsApp thread later. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. Excellent. Questions, comments, scrap the whole idea and burn it up. What do you think we should do? a great start. I, I think that people need to find whatever works for them. Um, I know you talk about meditation. Meditation doesn't work for me at all because I just sit there when I try to clear my mind and use my mind, like all of these thoughts that, that are, you know, and, and it makes me more stressed because it, it, the quiet bothers me, I think. But alternatively, I use tapping so I'm doing something while I'm essentially meditating and, and tapping works really well for me. Um, so you just have to find what works for you to reduce the stress and, and um, all the negative things that might be happening around you. And I love the grat gratitude is attitude or attitude is gratitude. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. So I'm going to remember that because I, I think that that helps to be grateful for what you do have. But Absolutely. no, this was a great start. Thanks, Julie. Sure. Jonas, what do you think? Or either of you? Well, yeah, yeah, either one of you. I think you guys are muted. Yeah, I want to say um, thank you so much um, for this moment. I'm very appreciated. Uh, very welcome. Thank yeah. You, uh, you talk about more my experience for Haiti, especially Leogan, but you know, I'm out of the country. I see the pro, uh, the system, and 
I'm talking to my brother about that now. If we have the access, this um, permission, they probably need that because it's very important for you to listen and see what we can do when you have stress, you know, because we have many problems at the same time. Yeah. But you need to know exactly when you have something, when you have some problem, you know, well, hey, what we can do for that. But this experience for me is very good. Thank you so much. Good, good. I am with Jonas. It's, uh, it's really nice. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, a couple of things I, I would like to point out is, uh, is uh, you guys mentioned uh, on, uh, on, on the list, eating, eating uh, the proper food, eating good food. I don't think in Haiti they know what's good food because mm -hmm. everything we have every day is rice. And I don't think rice is good for you. And the food is very, very greasy. And I don't think that's good for you. <laughs> you know, so, and uh, I haven't found a, a person that cooked for me yet that I would say the food is healthy. But it's so good, it's so tasty, I eat it anyway. But <laughs> I know it's no good for me. <laughs> you know, so as you guys were talking about, that's what I was thinking. That first video was great. I mean, that's, that's, that, that was perfect. I, I needed that. Uh, excellent. Well, what, one thing I'm going to put on a different hat for a second. Let's do positive ripples. <clears throat> if if we could find someone to lead a cooking or a food nutrition discussion there, I'm sure that would be something we would be willing to help with. Okay. So think of that now. Like I mean, you know, I'm right. not. I'm not. But, but but planting a seed. We're planting a seed. And uh, another things. I, I, I ask for a salad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and then they look at me, what you talking about? Washing? They say, washing salad? I said, whoa. They know about washing salad. I said, washing salad is not a salad for me. I want to see green. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a lot of greens. <laughs> you know, but but that's, uh, they're not used to that. You know, I, I haven't had a good salad since I, and I've been here for a month. Yeah, but the, the, the problem is um, a salad is very expensive to in Haiti because you know um, the guy that planting that, um, me and my bro work to see if we can have more salad because when you're going at the market it's very expensive but who have money for that? Who has money for that? Yeah. There isn't some someone um, eat rice and bean all day. It's cheap. And the family is a rice and bean. bean, bean. Well, they, they look at salad like that's not a meal. A salad <laughs> cannot be a meal. Yeah. You know, that's that's one of the problems. Well, in the garden program, we're gonna have to grow more lettuce. And the other thing yeah. we have to do is make sure, like I know, I know when I go down, I'm afraid right. to eat some things. Yeah. That cooked so we want to make sure the water source for the salad is clean too right 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 yeah but uh, my, my doctor mentioned uh, having uh, half of the plate being salad and then uh, 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 a quarter will be maybe rice if you like rice and then meat but yeah. the, the plate itself half of the plate that will be salad and uh, so I haven't been eating right at all for the more than a half I've been here. <laughs> so I know I'm going to be paying for it when I get back. My doctor is going to be unhappy. <laughs> we also have some people on uh, WhatsApp from, uh, I'd see two at least from Sierra Leone. Batman is now on and Francis. Uh, I don't see if there's any more. Uh, did Mohammed leave? Yeah. No, um, he's not here too. Would you guys have anything to add? Jonas' uh, son was trying to get in, and um, he was waiting for somebody to open the door. But oh, uh, the just... waiting room! Oh boy, yes. that was our bad. Yeah, so no, we didn't. Yeah, that was our bad. Right. When we were teaching, we were doing it. We weren't looking at our phones or anything. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, we will record. I mean, this is recorded, so we'll share it, and he can watch it after the fact. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, anyone, Batman, you want to say anything, uh, or Francis? Give it a second, but it don't doesn't sound like it. I I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, I see the the. The, uh, this mentioned Haitian Creole. Oh, oh wait, he's now talking. Sorry. Okay. All right. Hold okay. on one second, Batman. Go ahead. You go first. Uh, there was there was a Haitian Creole. Is that first video could be translated in Haitian Creole? So it can't. Well, I think we can because I think if you put it on to the. So let me just show you what it was. This one, it was. The one with uh, it, it's it, it's a cartoon of a black lady with stress. Yes. Uh -huh. So click click that, and I think it has. <laughs> I open that. Okay, and then go to maybe closed captioning if it opens. Yeah. So there may be. Yeah, there probably is. I'm guessing. So click on that. No, that the one to the right. I think. Yeah, right there. It's slow loading. Okay, okay, so yeah, to do subtitles and then auto translate. So click on it. Yeah, it's just very slow right now. Okay. okay. So it could be done. It looks like it. Yes. I think so. Yes. Yes. So okay. and then, you just have to be very patient, I guess. Yeah. Well, we have. Our, our, I think we're having bandwidth issues right now because we have like four things going in this room, and I think it's just taking up too much. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Batman. Batman, you up? Yeah, he was a second ago. Let's see Haiti. No. Would it be under Creole? No. So this is up, uh, French. We can do French. Yeah, we got French okay, that, that will work. Yeah, French, French it'll do. I don't see Creole, I don't know why. It usually lists it, but yeah. I don't see it on this one. Yeah, French will be right. Yeah, okay, wait, wait, let's try this. Let's do this, auto-translate. And then do Haitian Creole. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, there it is. So yes, I, I, will, I will send it to you in, in Haitian Creole. Okay, sounds good. All right, Francis or Batman, you guys want to have anything or are we done? Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Hello, good guys. How are you? Good. We are. It was a good, it was a good, I don't know how long you were on for. I couldn't tell exactly when you came on, but I hope, uh, hope it was good for you. Yeah, first of all, I want to say thanks to you, Juma, and the rest. I want to enjoy the program. I want to say thanks to everyone for joining, and I hope to learn more. Okay. Well, awesome. yeah, stay, stay with us. We'll keep sharing stuff. We'll put this video up for the, of today's so that you can share it with people there as well, that they can watch it. Yeah, I will do. Okay. We'll be in touch. All right. Yeah. And, and I know this, uh, and I should say this, this whole idea in part came out from a Batman program we did a few years ago, um, where there was a young woman who had just graduated from college, and then she went and uh, killed herself. And the family wanted to start a program that every person matters. And this, this is the outgrowth of that idea. All right. Well, thank you. We have to go. We're going to get kicked out of this room. First of all, let me say two or three years ago by the name Elizabeth Bangua. Yep. It was a sad time, but hopefully uh, you'll have to share this with her family at some point and let her know, let them know that her memory is still working in other areas. Yeah, I will do. I will do. Let me say two of them, they are part of that of our group. We created 
let me say two to three years. Well, that's good. I will try to share with them. And also, I will let them know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we are going to have to go. So, all right. Bye, everyone. Until Thanks, next guys. time. We'll, we'll try you. to do one of these again and not too Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.